الحمد لله ثم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Again, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I first want to thank the organizers for uh, organizing such a wonderful event I have heard uh, all kinds of good things about yesterday and we just heard the, the MC reiterating the same uh, feeling that many of you have uh, I, I just hope that this adds another element to those uh, uh, good things that came out of yesterday's uh, opening day, I believe. Uh, the topic that was given to me is bad character and how it impacts us collectively, in other words. Uh, normally, when you're discussing this topic, from the Muslim perspective, the approach is oftentimes what constitutes a good character. So oftentimes we just go straight to the Prophet ﷺ's good character. <clears throat> the way this is approached is slightly different, and I find this thing very interesting. I mean, the approach very interesting. Bad character instead of good character and how that impacts us collectively. And of course, you cannot describe bad character until you first describe what a good character is, right? In life, there are so many contrasts. You know, people, all, all, you know, the cynics and the skeptics always say that if God's good, then why would God create injustice in the world? You know? You hear that sometimes, that argument, especially in the academia circles and all of that. And the, the counter question to that is, how would you know what justice is if you don't know what injustice is first? How would you appreciate justice if you don't know what injustice is? In this case, how can you appreciate good character if you don't know what bad character is? So first we have to kind of establish what a bad character is, then compare that to the other side as to and which one has more value to the human being and which one really helps building good society in the truest sense. Societies that make space for one another, that takes care of one another, that respects one another, that's honest in dealings with one another, and so forth and so on. So that's how much they are interlinked, the two topics. Good character, bad character. Or bad character in this case, and good character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَ لِلنَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, deal with or say to people as you're dealing with good things, all that's great. And in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not talking about the believers. He's talking about an nas, which means everybody. Even if that person is the worst human being on the face of the earth. Fir'aun, I think, in all the uh, scriptures, whether from the Jewish tradition or the Christian tradition or the Islamic tradition, all of them agree that Pharaoh was a bad person. Fir'aun was a bad person, the worst human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or God created. Even if you're dealing with Fir'aun, with Pharaoh, to deal with him in a nice way. That's what we are instructed to do. No differentiation when it comes to dealing with people and how much you are responsible of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make us responsible of the other people's behavior, but he makes us responsible of our own behavior. How do we deal with others? And that one we are instructed to do precisely, to deal with others with the best way possible. No excuses about that. And then in 
describing the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam's character, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another ayah says, wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Indeed, you are of the best character. Your character is indeed one of the best, the best. And this is the creator himself praising his creation, one of his creation. In this case, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, may peace be upon him. So that's how important, generally, a good character and dealing with others is. And we should take it very seriously. And the Prophet on his part, advising one of the Sahaba, therefore, the all of the Sahaba, therefore, all of us, he said, as he was advising to Ma'ad ibn Jabal, he said, وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ Deal with people in the best manner possible. Again, people. He's not talking about believers. He's not talking about those of close to, of kin to us, those who are from the same culture as us, those who are family members, those who, who, whom we prefer in comparison to others. None of that. He's talking about everybody. Everybody that you come in contact with, deal with them in the best way possible. That is how serious the khuluq or the good character is. To develop that is very serious. Well, another hadith Rasulullah says, وَمَا بِعِثْتُ إِلَّا لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمُ الْأَخْلَاقِ that I was not sent except to perfect or to show you or to demonstrate the best character. This deen, this whole religion is based on aspiring to reach that best character. Constantly building oneself to become the best way possible. And who is the best judge of that other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course, the people that we deal with. Those whom we interact with are the best judge. They're the ones who decide whether we're, as individuals, good people or not. They're the ones who would decide whether you and me are good people to deal with or not, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are not a good person, of course, your best friend is not the one oftentimes who would say, you know what, this person is not a good person. This friend of mine is not a, one of a good character. It's always others that you come in contact with, whether it is at work, whether it is in the classroom, whether it is in the hallway, whether it is in the neighborhood, all of them. Collectively, those people are the best judge of the individual's character. We are human beings, and human beings are interdependent. We are interdependent. And we share a specific space, whether it is within the house, same household, within the same community, within the same workplace, classroom, or city, or a country. We share a specific space. And we also have certain sensibilities as human beings. There are certain things we value, certain things that we don't like. But there's also a universal thing that's common in all human beings. You know, there isn't a society that I'm aware of that hates to be truthful, for example, you know, or want to be truthful. A society that collectively just praises a person to be you know, from the day that they're born, teaches them how to become a liar or a cheat or a corrupted human being. Because that's what bad character is, ultimately, all of these things, right? There isn't a society that does that deliberately, I'm talking about, that has a, that has a, a, a manhaj for it or a curriculum set for it, you know. From today on, this is what we're going to teach. Yeah, people do that implicitly in some cases. 
and we can argue that back and forth. But directly, though, there aren't parents who just raise their kids to become bad deliberately. And that bad character is not something you and I or anyone is born with. A person who is a, a person of bad character is not born that way. Innately, human beings are good people. They're born with, in Islam, what we know as the fitra, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this in their conscience, in their hearts, that they were created and that they ultimately should be worshiping that creator who created them and find the path towards that. And that path is path of goodness. So innately, that human being is aware of that. As he or she grows up, he, he would not have or she would not have any difficulty finding if everything is, uh, all the variables are stable, in other words that no other forces are trying to derail him or her. And we're going to get into that in a, in a second. But as long as the path is clear, there are no distractions, that human being is programmed to find his creator and to become a good person. But then in the process, starting with the family, that human being is derailed directly or indirectly through the biases of the human beings, ignorance, so many different things. And then ultimately you will find that person growing incrementally to become a bad person, a person of bad character. There are so many ways to define what is a bad character. So right now I told you that as human beings, we are interdependent. And I also told you that we share a common space as human beings. So when you share a common space, when the room is crowded, you try to make space for one another. If it's not that crowded, then everybody gets a big share, right? But bad character is having a room like this, a foul smell in this kind of room. And people are in there. Imagine that. Some people will get offended. Some people will leave the room. Some people will never want to have anything to do with this place, right? I mean, and so forth and so on. A bad character is similar to that. And the Prophet, والسلام, in so many different ways, he describes, and one of the ways was, you know, frequenting a person who's good and a frequenting a person who's of a bad character. He describes the person of good as though you're visiting a place where they sell perfum perfumes. Not only that would you, would you enjoy the scent, but you might even end up with a little sample to go along with by visiting that kind of place. So you're always happy. You enjoyed the smell. It was great. And then somebody might say, you know, try this out or something. So always you're coming out with something positive. Whereas the one with the bad character you hang with, you live with some kind of an injury or discomfort or anger or so many things. We have to keep in our mind that we are individuals who are surrounded with people that we don't select. We don't choose our people. For example, you're right now in a, an institution of higher learning. Some are Muslims, some are not. Some are atheists, some are not. Some are uh, seasoned. Um, they're just coming on to school. They're freshmen. Some are not. You know, All of those people are going to come up with different backgrounds, different mindset, different appreciation, different value system, and so forth. So we don't choose people who are around us. You know. But the point is, once you find yourself amidst those people, good or bad, what are you responsible of as an individual? The individual is responsible mainly to correct his way or her way. You cannot control 
the weather outside, whether it's going to snow or rain or, you know. But you certainly can control how you're going to dress for that. That one is up to you. Whether when, when you were warned that it's going to be storming, if you opted to just dress lightly, for example, you'll pay that price. So that much you're responsible of, and no one is making you responsible for the things that are external, for example, beyond your power. You can't. So if we're going to change, we have to change ourselves first. And then hope in that process of interacting with other people that hopefully we might inspire other people to become changing towards the positive also. <clears throat> What are the common causes of bad character? And I'll list some of them. I'll go over some of them. I mean, there are a lot of reasons and causes of bad, ca bad character. I don't want you to think that this is the only ones. They're not the only ones. But they're the common ones that we see in people oftentimes. One is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance existed before people were aware of in the form of society to live together and to accommodate one another and all of that. And it exists this very day as human beings advanced. Advanced technologically, advanced uh, in, in terms of using their mind and their faculty and understanding and all of that, they advanced. Yet ignorance exists to this very day. Ignorance about what? Well, of course, no one is a knower of all things. But in this case, what we're talking about, just the basic rules of living together, you know, sharing this common space, how to not offend one another, how to not cheat one another, and so forth and so forth. Just ignorant of all of that creates a, an, an attitude that offends people in some cases when the person is not even aware of what he or she is doing or when he or she thinks that it's the right thing to do. That's number one. The other one, of course, is the lack of religious or moral value for the person to have just some kind of an anchor, you know, that prevents him or her from drifting into an ocean of confusion, you know, helplessly drifting off. But this becomes sort of like an anchor. The good character becomes what really holds the person in place. You know. Bad upbringing is another one. You know, we said earlier in, in my opening, I said that there is no a group of people that I'm aware of or families or, you know, and with the exception of any, anything is possible in the world. But I'm talking about in general, in general. People who, d who develop some kind of curriculum to make people bad, for example, and just say, okay, today you progress towards uh, becoming a, a person of bad character this level, and tomorrow will you know, get you to this level, and then finally you graduate and you get your diploma based on that. There aren't people like that. But there are people who do the bad upbringing for so many reasons. Partially what we just talked about, lack of morality, ignorance, and all of that, or a combination of that, which results, for example, a family to raise a child inappropriately and not teach him or her right from wrong, you know, uh, that the respect towards others, you know, respect towards, uh, uh, towards self and, and, and guarding the person's relationship with God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfilling all their requirements religious-wise and so forth and so on. They didn't teach them the basics. The basic tarbiyah is missing. You know, and that could be for various reasons, as I said. Another causes could be also, which also could be the symptom also, is the attention-seeking. You know how some people like to be approved, you know, and uh, affirmative reaction from the others. You know, others are in that particular setting are bad, and then they will start acting similar to them so they can get 
the affirmation from others. That could be also one of the causes because the more that the person does that to accommodate others, the more he or she slips into that bad behavior that becomes part and parcel of his or her character. <clears throat> the other one is, of course, situational oftentimes, which is anger. Anger is not constant, you know. Anger kind of rises and you know, gets lower. It's like a roller coaster of emotions, right? But when you are anger, you know, people tend to behave in a certain way that's not really within their character. Unless they come back from that, unless they repent and come back from that behavior, that becomes a slippery slope where that behavior becomes part of their character. Because they're angry at how my parents have treated me once upon a time, so therefore I will be doing this or I will do that. You hear people say that oftentimes, especially in colleges, setting in high schools and all of that. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yeah. You hear that people that are angry at their parents, you know, maybe, maybe he favored, my father favored my brother over me, you know, and, and my mother did this once upon a time to me, and now I have to kind of uh, get back at that. Uh, and, and hurt them emotionally and that type of thing. So that anger. The other one is also arrogance. Arrogance causes people to behave badly and develop a bad character. Because if you're constantly looking down on people, for example, and that you are above everybody else, and that's not only limited by people who are just uh, in, you know, in, in common, ordinary relationships, Unfortunately, even it can happen within the, within the uh, religious uh, leaders, and, 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 and sad to say this, you know, it can go to that level. So people have to recognize arrogance. Anytime the attitude is, I am better than you, regardless of what. I'm better than you, and it expresses in that fashion, it's wrong. You know, if we're taking the model of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he is the one that we described as the best character. One of the most distinctive aspect of his character was humility. Humility. Not to feel that you're above anybody. And he's the prophet of God. And he is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator himself, described him as the best character. But he is not saying, I'm the best character. So therefore, you know, that's not the mentality. So arrogance definitely creates an attitude of, you know, where, where a person slips into that bad behavior, I mean bad character. And then peer pressure, which is connected to the earlier what we talked about, which is the attention-seeking one. Uh, and in some cases, peer pressure can be not only attention-seeking, but also a person who is not really even confident on himself or herself. And, and that's actually most of the people who are, uh, who are influenced by peer pressure it are people who are not really confident in themselves. So in other words, in order to belong, they have to do a lot of things. Yeah. And, and you see that. You know, somebody who never used to go uh, nightclub, now everybody's going, hey, why not me? You know? um, and, and that's the, the, the thinking. Know, which is what's known as the group think, right? Group think. You, know, you abide by the group and the way they want it, or you are the one who will be ostracized, and you pay the price. So in other words, we're going to call you all kinds of names. We're going to shun you out. We're, we're not going to be friends with you, and so forth and so on. So therefore, you have to kind of accommodate the group's will. And you have to be part of that, even though you, innately you feel like this is not something that you're comfortable with. This is not something that's good. You know? But you would do that to accommodate them, or some people would do that to accommodate them in order to belong. You know? Before I continue, I want somebody to tell me, first of all, how much time do I have? Okay, what time is it now? 10 more minutes? Jazakallah khair. So now, Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam says, لِكُلِّ دِينٍ خُلُقْ وَخُلُقُ الْإِسْلَامِ الْحَيَاءِ 
the Prophet ﷺ says, every deen, every religion that was descended from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mankind, it had a distinctive character. And that distinctive character of the <coughs> this deen, Islam, is humility, modesty, shyness. Very same character that some people will look at you, shyness. Did he add that? You know, yes, shyness also. That is the distinctive character of the deen, according to the Prophet. <clears throat> What he is saying is, in other words, if the person is <clears throat> one who practices humility, and with humility comes decency and, and, and modesty and all of these other good things, all of that package, to attain that, that's he's saying, the crown of the religion is that. So in other words, that runs in contrast, if you think about it, with what we develop as a lifestyle or values that we develop without really paying a whole lot of attention because the society values assertiveness, straightforwardness. You know, you have to really be a go-getter and doing all kinds of things and in your face. And, and if you're in, an athlete just celebrating in a way that offends everybody else, it's fine. You know, all of that, which is in contrast with what the Prophet ﷺ was talking about. What he is saying is, in essence, the deen is about balancing yourself, about keeping it to yourself, about not crossing and transgressing against somebody else's space. You know, keep it to yourself. You want to you wanna be in, uh, in uh, you know, there's a setting for everything. There are moments to be assertive, yes, when the time calls for that, sure but not to transgress against the other person's feelings. So you're constantly not only guarding your behavior for your own sake, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of what you're doing, but you're also trying to guard the sensitivity of the other people who are around you. So you're not going to offend them. You know, it's very serious not to offend them. And the Prophet ﷺ took this thing very, very seriously. Because you don't, and those people who are your friends, you have to know their level of sensitivity also in order to guard that. And it does not have to be all set the standard, by the way, because there are people that might not get offended if you were acting with them in a certain way at that moment, and they're your friends, and that's okay. But let's say within your friends, there is somebody who is a little bit more sensitive to see you act in a certain way. Are you required to respect that person's feeling? Of course. The deen says, yes, you have to do that. And the Prophet والسلام, when Sayyida Aisha was among the family, you know, and she was uh, with her husband, radiallahu anha, there was a knock on the door, and then uh, the Prophet والسلام, allowed the person to come in. It was her father, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anha. And he came in, he greeted the Prophet والسلام, and the, sat. And the Prophet, meantime, was leaning back and his leg was a little bit showing. You know. And in, 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 you know, he, he did not sit up or straighten himself. This was his best friend, his father-in-law. He's right at home. There's nothing to worry about at that, that time. So the next knock... Another person came and knocked on the door the same way, and he invited them in. It turns out to be Umar radiallahu anhu. And he did. Again, his friend, right hand, left hand, both of them were, the Prophet was alayhi salam, in between them all the time, right? So he did not really adjust himself. And then the third knock comes, and he recognized the voice of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah alayhi salam sat up and straightened himself. This is the Prophet ﷺ straightening himself, sat up straight. And then he invited him in once he fixed himself. And then Sayyida Aisha asked him later, and she said, my father came in, you greeted him, and he sat. He took a seat, and the casual conversation continued. And then Umar came, and he knocked. You invited him also, casual conversation. Uthman 
all رضي الله عنهما he came in you straighten yourself why is that and this is by the way the source of knowledge of course you ask these kind of questions and you know and then the prophet عليه السلام explained and he said should I not be feeling a little shy about a person who's the angels are shy of them. His level of shyness, in other words, he's saying is so high, I don't want him to feel uncomfortable if he came to talk to me and he sees me sitting in a certain way. He might say, this is the prophet of God, I might not want to look at him and keep his face down or something along those lines. He said, in order to avoid all of that, I sat up just to make sure that I accommodate him because I know his nature, he's a shy person. So you accommodate him. This is the deen, what it teaches, the sensitivity towards others, always guarding the others' feeling. But we are in a society where others' feelings don't matter. You know? and, and when you listen to it closely, when people who are defenders of freedom of expression, it's always that person who's expressing himself. But what about the per people who are listening? If a person comes here and, and uses profanity, for example, and we all turn and we're offended, you know, and when we start complaining and somebody says, well, freedom of expression. Of course it is a freedom of expression, and he has the right to say that. But we also have the right you know, what it, to be alerted, at least so I can keep my ears closed. You know. A while back, I, we used to have, uh, some years ago, uh, a neighbor, and in Islam, deen, you know, this deen is really guards the rights of the neighbor. It guards the rights of the neighbor, period. In fact, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest display of bad character is to offend your neighbor and to transgress against them. Or to, you know, uh, as some people might, well, yeah, the Billah, try to have relationship with, you know, a bad relationship with one of them you know, a daughter, a, a wife, or, or what have you. One of the worst crimes that you can do in Islam is that. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, he or she is not one of us. See, that one is like, he's not one of us. If he done that, if his evil or her evil, he, uh, I'm sorry, if his neighbor are not free of his or her evils. This is what the hadith of the Prophet says. He's not one of us, or she's not one of us. If you cannot guard the rights of your neighbor, whose, whose rights are you going to guard? Someone that you don't know? Of course not. So in other words, it's a very serious matter. And we used to have a neighbor who, as I said many years ago, and in the, on the weekends, he would wash his car. And he would have few drinks, and uh, this was an apartment. He would have few drinks, and he will get foul mouth. And I can hear everything that the man is saying in my living room. He would be screaming and shouting all kinds of profanity as though he's living in my, in my space. You know. How do you handle that? Very difficult situation, I must admit. Of course, you don't handle it when the day when he's drunk. Certainly, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So, but. We kind of negotiated after doing, I started talking to him when he was sober and just telling him, look, I have little kids. I know you have every right to say what you have to say. I understand that. Somebody angered you, I understand that. But I have some kids in, 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 in this house, right next to you, and I'm your neighbor. You know? And I don't use that language, and I don't want anyone to use in my, uh, that language in, in my place. I respect your right to say anything, but respect my right also to have at least little space. You know, we're paying rent in this, this place. You know. So alhamdulillah, it worked out. You know. And that's why I'm, I'm telling you, guarding the spaces of others is very important. Bad I mean, uh, good character, I'll just list a few things and then I'll stop, inshallah ta'ala. And um, honesty, another criteria of uh, of, of, of good character, of course. The Prophet والسلام, everyone knew uh, that he was talking about, and uh, he was talking about the, uh, he was talking about something real when he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me wahi, inspiration, and 
commanded me to share with you this religion. Because most of them did understand that he's not a liar. One thing that the Prophet ﷺ was not, is not, he was not a liar. And everyone knew that. This is before he got the revelation. Before he was uh, and given the right to become yeah, and he, the, the messenger of God. Everybody understood that. He was also a person of introspection. Always thinking, processing information, reflecting. You know, and this is very good and uh, quality that we are somewhat de and he, and straying from as Muslims. You know, introspection is a very good thing. To always reflect on what have I done right, what have I done wrong, how can I improve myself, and how am I in relation to others, especially at night before you go to sleep. And wallahi, it's a very, very good habit to have. You know, it's a very good habit to have a night before you sleep to make account of everything that you have done that day, good or bad. You know, now I'll be honest with you and I'll be standing in front of all of you. I don't do that every night. I try to, but I'll forget. And I'm a human being. So don't feel uh, discouraged if you are forgetting, but start it. Every night, just reflect on what you have done right, what you have done wrong, and see how you can improve that, how you can build towards that. Wallahi, you will see a lot of difference. Gratefulness, you know, have, <clears throat> always expressing gratitude. If people were hospitable to you, you express that gratitude. The Prophet ﷺ says, he who does not thank people does not thank his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if you cannot understand that sim simple transaction, somebody did good to you, to say thank you very much, how would you understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives you the air that you breathe and does not send you bill at the end of the month or disconnect the services on you when you don't worship him, you know, or even delay? You know? Imagine that. If you cannot understand to worship that creator, then you're not going to understand a whole lot. So that's what good character is. Good character is to have all of that combined. And bad character is that repellent, that f foul smell that we described, that, uh, that feeling of anger, an offensive feeling that offends everybody else, regardless of who is doing that. You know. <clears throat> Against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a bad person, you know, to express that bad character towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how can one express towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not worshiping him, by not even acknowledging that he created us, as some people do, and, and proudly go in circles and defend that, that there is no God, and we were not created, and we just happen to be here, and we are going to die, and, and, you know, and, and, and no one is accountable to any of these actions. For you. So that's one of the major offenses. The second one is, to be a, bad, a person of bad character against your parents. Think about that. Against your parents. Immediately after the offenses against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows by offenses against parents. And we were talking about how some people become people of bad character by repelling against the way their parent might have treated them or I didn't like the way they were, uh, yani, and they were not giving me enough love or what have you, as some people do, and calling their parents all kinds of names. And others will internalize it and not really even uh, counter them and say, why are you calling your parent this way? Even if she was bad to you, you know. Imagine, didn't she carry you for nine months? Did she not take care of you when you were helpless? You know, no one engages them at that level. It's always, the story starts from the middle. And when you start the story from the middle, it always has a, 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 you know, a false conclusion or a, a, an erroneous conclusion. And then the third one, we said offending against your neighbors. We mentioned that earlier. So these three, just I hope I, I leave that within your mind. These three offenses against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator who created us all, against our parents and against our neighbors. Then against our elders, against our teachers, against our imams, against our, all of these people fit in, that, in, that, in those categories. That we don't want a people that are rude and uh, bad, bad character that offends everybody else. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. I'll stop here, inshallah. Barakallahu feek.
people when we are next. Yeah, there's gonna be a question and answer session now. Um, are there there were notes part on this side too? Are there any sessions? Can you please read it out loud for for them to hear, and then I'll answer in the chat. Okay. The first question: If one of my friends' negative character is having a bad effect on myself, and my life is on my life, is it okay to end the friendship or to distance myself? <coughs> if so, how should I go about that? Very very good question. Let me let me put this one back on. This is a very good question. I, I want to say one thing, first of all, because in my definition, I should have added one thing. How do we determine whether a person is an individual of bad character? You know, Is it because they have one habit? Or is it because one time they did that? Or is it something that they have a pattern of doing? You know? And I would like to say people are bad of bad character when they have a pattern. When you put their scales of good things and bad things on both sides, the bad outweighs the good. In that case, that person is a person of a bad character. But if a person has one bad habit, you know, and, and, and these bad habits can be, of course, different levels, and we don't want to undermine that. But one bad habit is not really, I wouldn't say go to the cutting the relationship immediately. You know. I wouldn't say that because the relationship is very important. You know, maybe the person needs just an advice from you. you know, maybe the person needs that to have the, for you to have the guts to talk to them and, and tell them why it's wrong to do that and how it's difficult for them and how you care about them and not, not want to see them and uh, go into the right, uh, wrong path and so forth and so forth. And that could ultimately change the individual, or at least you give it a try and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you that way. But if the habit is a one of detrimental habit, very bad habit that's really constant, even as you advise them, they'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it, then of course you just have to kind of develop gradually, and not cutting the relationship of course, but gradually standing back to show them that you're not content with the behavior. You know, and see if that would change something. If it does not change in that, then continue adding more, walking backwards. In other words, distancing yourself from the relationship a little. And then in that gradual process, if you see this person's really doing something miserable, bad, and, and that one item that we just mentioned, which is, let's assume it's a very bad case, and then you, of course, you walk away from the relationship, but you have to have a process. You can't just you know, cut rel relationships are very important in Islam, and it should be universally important. And guarding relationship is very, very important. So you don't want to cut it right away, but you want to be that advisor. And especially if that person is a person of faith, right, the Prophet ﷺ said that you have to be mirrors towards one another. You know, you have to kind of show where the person's not, you know, uh, wh where he or she needs to fix, basically. Okay, the second question is, I understand in our religion that the deen says to be shy and modest, but sometimes I'm afraid this can border on becoming apologetic for our religion. How does one be, how does one be modest and shy without being apologetic when people may confront us? JazakAllah khair. <coughs> yeah, very good question again. <clears throat> and how do you do that? Well, difficult, but I would say, there is always, and remember I mentioned earlier when I was talking about that, I said there is a situational assertiveness where the condition requires that you have to assert yourself. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about people who are not going to assert themselves at any point. No. We're talking about when you're interacting with people generally to be a modest person, a person who is decent, a person that draws people and not repels them and that type of thing. But if the situation allows that you try that you have to assert yourself and draw the line somewhere, 
by all means. That's not against Islam. That's actually part of Islam. In some cases, you have to assert yourself. You have to be straightforward. Even the Sahaba, when you look at them, there were some people who were really assertive. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu is one of the people who are very, very assertive. You know? But that doesn't mean that Sayyidina Umar was not a shy person, was not a modest person, was not a decent person and all of that. But in the circles, that moment, what was happening, it required that reaction from him. You know? And we hear that in the, in, 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 in the, um, in, in the Sira, for example. In that particular situation, this is how Umar reacted, radiallahu anhu. You know? So is that wrong? No, it isn't wrong. So we can assert ourselves in, in the condition that you described, where you have to and, uh, say something, especially when it's deen, when it's religion discussion, I mean religious discussion. I think sensitivity is, it, it should be multiplied in those cases. Unfortunately, we don't exercise that. Dialogue in deen oftentimes is shouting at each other. You know, no, we're right. No, I'm right. No, yeah, yeah. no, that's not the way it should be with deen. With religion, it should be a dialogue that's civil, modest, and, and a discourse-like. You know, yeah, that you give the person, you hear what they have to say, what's their concern, and then you reply. That way you're not being a, a timid. You're not being someone who's, you know, fits in that stereotypical, especially when you're uh, female, for example, with this uh, stereotypical uh, mus Muslims don't treat their women, you know, they don't allow their women to assert themselves and what have you. You don't want to play in that. But there are conditions, as I said, when you will have to assert yourself and by all means assert yourself. Yes. Okay. Um, this is the last question. How do you deal with a family member who displays bad character yet thinks they have good character and refuses to listen to those who tell him or her the truth? Yeah, very difficult, and especially within families. And by the way, in all of these negotiations, it's much easier uh, in outside the family than it is within, within the family. I don't know why. It's always more difficult to fix the situations that develop within the family than within two friends in the outside, because they have a lot of things at stake, you know. And they always, through that nervous process, I guess they overreact towards one another. You know, like one family is concerned about the other one's wrongdoing, they want to advise, but the advice is not going to come gen in a gentle way that the Prophet والسلام, used to exercise. Prophet would say that if you're not really giving that advice in private first, and you're not really taking the person to the side and saying, you know what, I really care about you and what you're doing is, there's a better way of doing it. And here it is. And if you're not offering that, and you're really humiliating that person in, in, in public or advising that person in public, then that's an exercise of humiliation, not, a, not an ex exercise of counsel in Islam. So in other words, you have to take that person and find the right moment, and timing is everything. You have to find the right moment to talk to that individual about. And if that individual does not have a good relationship, trusting relationship with you, then you always can find somebody else who can engage that person within the family context. It could be a, a parent, it could be a brother, it could be a sister, it could be a friend of the family, but somebody can engage him, and you don't have to be the one who delivers that message. You know, if you have a difficulty, find another person. Everybody has someone that they listen to, even the most stubborn people on the face of the earth. They always have somebody that they, that they listen to when they say something. So I just hope you exercise that because guarding the relationship within the family is very, very important, even more important with the strangers and others. So we concluded. Yes. Jazakumullah khaira jazaa. Assalamu alaikum.